What's going on guys? Welcome to the next video. Today I'm going to be ranking all 23 MCU films including Spider-Man Far From Home. Eventually I might do full length video reviews for each one of these films, but for now I don't want the video to be too long otherwise I'll be sitting here all day watching it upload. One other thing that I want to say is that there will be spoilers in this video for all 23 of these movies, so if you haven't seen any of them, go see them before you watch this video. With that out of the way, let's get started. In last place is Thor The Dark World, and the reason for that is that there really wasn't anything memorable about this film to me. The Dark Elves did not work as villains at all because they got no backstory whatsoever. Even interesting characters like Thor and Loki were turned into such unlikable and boring filler characters in this film, and it felt like there was nothing to really take away from this film or to add to the Thor universe or anything. This is by far my least favorite film in the entire franchise just because of how boring it is and lackluster. Overall, I'm giving Thor The Dark World a 5 out of 10. Number 22 is Iron Man 2. Now for me, this is a sequel that bites off way more than it can chew. There are so many plot lines that don't fully get developed by the end of the film because there's way too many of them. Now Tony Stark alone makes this a watchable film because he's such a charismatic and entertaining character on the screen. But overall this was a disappointing sequel to me that really didn't do too much for the overall story and just had way too many things going on at once. I'm giving it a 5.5 out of 10. Number 21 is The Incredible Hulk. Now I know a lot of people defend this movie and others absolutely hate it, and for me it's kind of an outlier of the MCU because it has a much different tone than most of the other Phase 1 films, and that's slightly excusable because they were still kind of figuring out exactly what they wanted to do, but for me it felt a bit out of place and there wasn't anything particularly memorable about the film. It's clear that they weren't really sure if they wanted to go the whole comedic route after Iron Man and continue that kind of tone for this superhero movie. And overall, there was mixed results, and I'm giving The Incredible Hulk a 5.5 out of 10. Number 20 is Iron Man 3. Now, to be fair, I think this film is a lot better than the back three. It does try a lot of new and interesting things and kind of puts a spin on the basic MCU formula. Now, the problem with it for me is that a lot of these plot lines don't really pay off. Some examples being the Mandarin twist and the whole thing with the kid that Tony Stark meets when he flies out in the middle of nowhere. It was a little bit lackluster for me, although I will say the final battle in this film was really entertaining and easily what brought it up for me. This film proves to me that Shane Black is a very competent director when it comes to action flicks like this. It just didn't feel like a great MCU film to me overall. I'm giving it a 6.5 out of 10. Number 19 is Thor, and I actually have a lot of fun with this film. Chris Hemsworth is the lead, so there's nothing you can really possibly hate about this movie. The real issue with the film for me is that once Thor gets onto Earth and you get some of the really fun scenes with him in the fish out of water scenario where he doesn't know anything about, you know, the daily lives of people on Earth. While this is going on, we keep flashing back to Asgard, which is such a, which has such a serious tone, and I think they decided to take the premise of this one a little bit too seriously for the MCU, and luckily in the future with Thor Ragnarok, they can of course correct that. But for now, since we're talking about Thor, I'm going going to give it a 7 out of 10. Number 18 is Ant-Man. Now I hope I don't piss off too many people with this one. I know that he's a beloved character and I will agree that Scott Lang is probably the best thing about this film and his relationship with his daughter. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that bother me about this film, mainly it, the fact that its story is slightly redundant and disposable. It almost feels like a ripoff of Iron Man at times, especially with the villain. Although this film is definitely visually entertaining and his power is very cool, I just kept drawing comparisons between this and the first Iron Man and I found that kind of distracting and as a heist film overall, I found it to be a little bit boring. I'm giving Ant-Man a 7 out of 10. Number 17 is Avengers Age of Ultron. Now with this sequel, Joss Whedon decided to double everything. The characters, the danger of the villain, the action, everything is just doubled. And sometimes that can be great, other times it can be a little bit confusing. Although I thought all the action scenes and all the new characters, and even Ultron, pretty much worked for the most part, there was a lot of exposition scenes that were kind of necessary for the plot, but at the same time, it felt like a bit much. Oftentimes I felt that those scenes kind of distracted from the main story, and as a whole they definitely could have made a more cohesive story that fits together. Instead, we have a lot of characters having flashbacks and going off and doing their own thing, and at times this was a bit confusing and like I said, exposition heavy. I'm giving Avengers Age of Ultron a 7 out of 10. Number 16 is Captain Marvel. Now this is a film that I really enjoyed in theaters, and after I've watched it again though, I do feel like it is a bit bland. 
What I really love about the film is the inside look that we get at the conflict between the Kree and the Skrulls, and that's explored very deeply in this film. Once Carol Danvers is on Earth, I thoroughly enjoyed her encounters with Nick Fury, 90s Nick Fury, the de-aging is very impressive, and most of the scenes with them together were entertaining. Unfortunately, I found some of the action sequences to be poorly directed, mainly the one on the bus, and the one at the end in the spaceship was a bit dark, and the music choice was a bit strange, and the lack of an engaging protagonist prevented this film from being truly marvelous. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Number 15 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now I might be in the minority here when I say this, but I actually enjoyed this a lot more than the first Ant-Man. It kind of takes the absurd premise, takes it up a notch, and turns it into a really fun, light-hearted blockbuster. Also, say what you want about Ghost, but I actually think she's pretty cool, and I like that her motivation isn't something sinister. It makes her a much more complex character as a villain until, of course, the end when she kind of leaves that behind. Overall, this is definitely an enjoyable summer blockbuster, as long as you don't take it too seriously. I'm giving Ant-Man and the Wasp a 7.5 out of 10. Number 14 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now I found this sequel to be just as funny as the first, and the cast is just as charismatic. I love the new additions, for the most part. My problems with this film mostly involve Ego, the new villain. It was really disappointing to see Kurt Russell's role reduced to Exposition City. And that's mostly what he does is play catch with Peter and deliver exposition until the final battle, which I will admit is very visually entertaining and probably the best part of the film. It's that stretch in the middle there that doesn't quite work for me. I also wasn't a huge fan of the storyline between Rocket and Yondu, but it did pay off with his sacrifice at the very end of the movie. Despite its drawbacks, I still had a lot of fun with this one. I'm giving Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 a 7.5 out of 10. Number 13 is Captain America the First Avenger. Now Steve Rogers is one of my favorite characters in the MCU because his motivation isn't really something quite as complicated as many of the other heroes. He's not doing anything for a specific reason other than because it's the right thing to do. And I love his pseudo-romantic relationship he develops with Peggy and it makes it all the more tragic at the very end when he sacrifices himself and ends up frozen in ice for, let's see, about 70 years, right? Couldn't remember the number, but I think that's it. But I won't lie, I think the Red Skull as a villain really drags this film down. Oftentimes I'll be really enjoying a scene and then it cuts back to him doing his sinister villainous things, but he's such a boring and underutilized villain and the end battle with him between him and Cap is not quite as entertaining as I would have hoped it to be. He's also another one of those villains that likes to deliver exposition and that kind of feels like his main role in the movie at certain points. But overall, of course I enjoy this one, it's one of the classics. I'm giving Captain America the first Avenger a 7.5 out of 10. Number 12 is Doctor Strange. Now I love how this film takes one of the most outlandish premises in the MCU and turns it into a very visually exhilarating experience. And despite a weak villain by Marvel standards, I actually thought the rest of the characters were pretty good. The one big flaw that I have with it is Strange's training. It did feel a little bit rushed and at times exposition heavy. You don't really understand much of his powers and the magic in the film. You just kind of have to accept it for what it is. And of course, there's going to be people that don't like that. I personally am okay with it. That's kind of the whole idea of Doctor Strange as a whole. But overall, this is definitely a very fun entry into the franchise, and I really love the beginning when he first gets into the car accident and realizes that he's never going to be able to use his hands again to do what he loves. I'm giving Doctor Strange an 8.5 out of 10. Number 11 is Black Panther. Now obviously there is an extremely high level of hype for this film when it first came out, and it mostly lives up to it. This film has a phenomenal cast, great action sequences, and most importantly, a touching story. Killmonger is easily one of the best villains in the MCU because they give him a very relatable backstory. You can really feel his pain and understand his motivation for why he wants to do these things to Wakanda so bad and release all these dangerous weapons around the world. I do still have a few small problems with this film though. For one, the opening sequence will make absolutely no sense to you unless you've seen Civil War, and because of that it's kind of exposition heavy, which is a big problem with a lot of these films. I also found that there is an over-reliance on mediocre CGI, which is a real disappointment because, well, this is Marvel. And lastly, I can't express how much I hate the scene where Killmonger throws T'Challa over the waterfall and everybody, including the audience, is led to believe that he's dead because, I mean, come on, we all know he wasn't dead there, but I just found the scene to be overall silly. But I still enjoyed this film as a whole and it was really good. I'll give Black Panther an 8.5 out of 10. So real quick before I get into the top 10, I just want to say that I love all 10 of these films, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, so if you don't like the way that I ranked them, that's fine. Just 
Do me a favor, let me know in the comments, because I'm curious to hear what your opinion is. Number 10 is Spider-Man Homecoming. Now right off the bat, I'll say that I love the fact that they skip past Peter's origin story and go straight to his kind of struggle with balancing being a high school student and being a superhero at the same time. I love that they were able to work Tony Stark in there too as sort of a mentor figure, and he's not in there too much either. It's just the right amount. I also really like Vulture. I think he's easily a cut above your average MCU antagonist. And wow, if that car ride to the homecoming dance isn't the most tense scene in the entire franchise. I'm giving Spider-Man Homecoming a 9 out of 10. Number 9 is Spider-Man Far From Home. Now I definitely had a tough time picking between these two, but I definitely think they're very on par with each other. The main difference for me is that this film handled the action sequences a little bit better. There's a lot more action, it's much more colorful, and we get to see Peter doing a lot more superhero things in addition to the teen comedy aspects, which are also turned up a notch for after Homecoming. While the first act is a bit slow, I really like that they kind of deal with the repercussions of Thanos' snap at the end of Infinity War, and they talk about how some of his classmates are now five years older than him. I thought that was a really interesting concept, and I'm glad that they worked that into the story. I do have to say that the first act is a little slow, but once things start kicking off, this became a very engaging and entertaining film. Although he does tend to deliver a lot of exposition, I really like Mysterio as a villain. Definitely very unique and something that you wouldn't expect to see in a film like this. I think it's safe to say that I like Far From Home a tad bit more than its predecessor, but I'm still giving it a 9 out of 10. Number 8 is Iron Man. Now much of this film's success can be attributed to its simplicity. Marvel took a very unpopular comic book character, casted him with a fantastic actor, and developed a story that had just about enough of everything. It's funny, it's action-packed, and most importantly, there's a real heart to it. This movie also doesn't have the weight of the other MCU films dragging it down, so it's kind of more free to go off and be its own thing, which is really nice when you go back and watch it after all 22 of the other films that have released since. They did it with this one first, guys. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Number 7 is Captain America Civil War. Now when I first saw the promotional materials for this film, I was a bit skeptical for how they could conceive, naturally, a story where Tony Stark would fight Steve Rogers, and I'll admit I was a bit blown away. This is probably the best that they could have done at developing a believable story that would lead to the airport battle at the end of the film. That being said, it still feels a little bit messy and uneven at times, but not to a detriment of the story in my opinion. This is also the MCU film that introduced Black Panther and Spider-Man, which are beloved enough to have their own films now. I'm giving Captain America Civil War a 9 out of 10. Number 6 is Captain America the Winter Soldier. I had a tough time choosing between number 7 and 6, but for me this one is just a tiny bit better because of how ambitious and different it is. As a standalone, it kind of feels like a spy thriller with all of the twists and turns that you'd expect in one. And having Bucky turn out to be the Winter Soldier makes for some of the most dramatic fight scenes in the entire MCU, and I love the dynamic between his character and Steve Rogers, and especially the very end when he just leaves him and just takes off. The fight scenes in this film are also so well directed and choreographed. This may be the first film that the Russo brothers directed, but it's still one of my favorites. I'm giving Captain America the Winter Soldier a 9 out of 10. Number 5 is Avengers Infinity War. Now personally this is one of my favorites, but there are a few issues narratively that I can't ignore. First I will say that this is probably one of the most ambitious crossover events in the history of film. And that automatically makes it really fun to watch. The Russo brothers decided to take an enormous cast and they found a lot of great character pairings that made for interesting banter and some really great action. Thanos is also my favorite villain in the entire MCU. The stakes feel so high when he's around, he's very intimidating. Although there isn't really a single dull scene in the entire film, the one storyline that I could have done without is where Thor and Rocket go to get his new axe. Because in Thor Ragnarok, we kind of just established that he doesn't need a hammer or an axe. He's the god of thunder. He doesn't need anything to help him channel his power anymore. So I wasn't really sure why he needed to go and do that in the first place. Regardless, this is a film that was so ambitious, heartbreaking, emotional, and I enjoyed every second of it in theaters. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Number four is Thor Ragnarok. Now this may just be the funniest film in the MCU, and it really stops trying to take Thor so seriously. Asgard is no longer the Lord of the Rings-esque kingdom that it was trying to be in the first two Thor films, and it's finally embraced 
as a floating landmass in the middle of space with magic. This also might be one of the most visually colorful and engaging films in the MCU. Just the color scheme that they use for this one is very, very entertaining. We also get great new characters like Valkyrie and Hela, and of course, Thor and Loki are better than ever. This movie is an absolute blast and probably the most rewatchable in my opinion. It also finally course corrected the Thor movies and it was really an embodiment of exactly what I wanted out of the franchise. I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10. Number 3 is Guardians of the Galaxy. It was so weird to see this film be so successful because it's so bizarre and quirky, but that's kind of what made it work. It's a space adventure film, which we have seen many, many times, but yet it still manages to establish itself as different from Star Wars and all of the other space fantasies out there that you could draw comparisons to. For me, it might be right behind Thor Ragnarok in second place for the funniest film in the MCU, because man, there are very few jokes in this film that don't hit home. Although James Gunn should take most of the credit for this, there is so much talent in this movie, and everybody was just so fantastic at what they did. The visuals, the score is probably one of the best in the entire MCU. The jokes, as I said before. And all in all, I love the characters and how they meet up and how they kind of play off of one another and become close friends. It makes for such a touching and emotional story. Guardians of the Galaxy is a non-stop thrill ride from start to finish, and I absolutely love it. I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10. Number two is The Avengers. Now this is definitely another big crossover movie event, and I remember when it first came out it was very hyped up, not to the point of Infinity War, but it really does feel like a culmination of all of the Phase 1 films. This is what we were building to. And it does not disappoint. It has all of the high stakes action and drama that fans want. I love how every character in this film gets a moment of spotlight too. We've got the Hulk, we've got Iron Man, we've got Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, Hawkeye. Everybody gets a moment to shine and they get some of their best scenes in the entire MCU in this film. Loki is also a great villain in this film. And I love how for once he's not switching sides between good and bad constantly. It makes it for a little bit more focused, consistent writing. And of course the third act of this movie contains one of the most iconic fight scenes of all time with all of the heroes teaming up to stop the alien invasion and it is breathtaking. I'm giving the Avengers a 10 out of 10. But of course, number one is Avengers Endgame for me. Now, when I first saw this movie in theaters, I came out thinking, wow, that was probably my favorite movie in the entire MCU. But I didn't want to make a rush judgment, so I went back and saw it a second time, and when I came out, I had the exact same opinion. The only thing that I really hear people complaining about with this film is the slow pace in the first act and how maybe it was a little longer than it should have been, and I guess I can agree with that. But after the action fest that was Infinity War, I'm actually really on board with the slower pace. It was really nice to get some downtime and character-driven moments. Everyone feels so relatable in this film for once because they're not just running around for three hours straight in their costumes kicking ass. They're all really just desperate to find a way to reverse what happened and kind of, you know, do the right thing for everybody that they lost. Part of the journey is the end, and I'm really glad that this film understood that we wanted really good conclusions for our characters in addition to an action-packed finale. And speaking of action, the last 45 minutes is pure awesomeness with a lot of well-earned fan service, and I enjoyed every second of it. I think it's safe to say that you guys can guess my consensus for Avengers Endgame, and I don't want to repeat myself, so I'll just leave it there. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. This took a long time to edit and put together, so I'm probably not going to be uploading for a couple days. I apologize for not being able to upload a lot recently, but that should change in the near future. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, don't forget, go down to the comments, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next movie review.